So this morning, we just want to take this short time to uh, give you a brief, um, brief talk about the, the what is Christianity, about that Christianity is a relationship and it's not a religion. If you have your Bibles, let's open with me to John 21, verses 15 through 17. And if you don't bring your Bible, it is here on the screen. Let's read. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus has asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Before Jesus leaves the earth, before Jesus begins to just give a final instructions to Peter, he begins to come to Peter and begins to say, you know what? You know, you're going to build my church. You're going to do all these all these amazing things, God, uh, God is just going to use you. There's going to be healing. There's going to be deliverance. There's, I mean, God is just will take you to a level you never dreamed before. But Jesus does not kind of emphasize to Peter, make sure you're prepared, make sure you're ready, make sure you're strong. But Jesus comes to Peter and he says, do you love me? It's like this final statement that Jesus, before anyone leaves, you know, before they're about to depart to a far country or before they're about to leave you, they give you these, make sure you don't forget this, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. Jesus comes to Peter and he says, do you love me? Peter's like, come on, dude, you know, we're, we're bros. Three years, we rolled together. We're good. But Jesus still stresses the point that Peter... I know you're, you're thinking what, what I'll do through you. I know that you, there's a great mission. There's a great task ahead of you. You have to do great things for me. But do you love me? Begins to make Peter to realize that the main thing about Christianity is not what we can do for God, but the relationship we can maintain with him. The main thing about Christianity is not what we do but the relationship we maintain. Peter's like, you know what? I've seen Jesus do crazy things. I see Jesus heal. I see people being, you know, the thousands being fed just through few, few bread and a few fish. I've seen people being raised from the dead and I'm going to do these amazing things because Jesus is leaving me. He's giving me this commission. But Jesus begins to tell to Peter, do you love me? I know you want to do great things. I know you want to accomplish just amazing things for me. But you have to understand that the main thing about Christianity is not what you can do for God. But the relationship you can maintain with him. And the atmosphere that's produced by it. Many people when they come to church and we see it happening. They, they, get, they come to church and right away they have this thing that, well how can I change? How can I be, do better? How can I save my family? How can I have these ideas? How can I reach my school? They begin to concentrate on the things that they can do for God, but yet they forget the fundamentals of Christianity is the relationship with Jesus Christ. They forget that the main thing, that everything when you put the Christianity on scale and you, you just say, what is the main thing about the Christianity is our love for Jesus Christ. Many people just, they come right away and they just try to change by themselves. And at the end of the day, they fail. Because you cannot change by yourself. It's God who helps you change. You cannot accomplish certain things by yourself because you, you have now strength to change by yourself. If you could change by yourself, you would never need to come to Jesus. Jesus flips the whole picture with Peter and he says, I know you want to do great things and I know you think you can succeed. But the question remains, do you love me? Our love for Jesus Christ needs to succeed and needs to go beyond of what we can do for him. 
Our love for Jesus has to be the strongest point and the strongest vision of our lives that, you know, I need to come to church. I need to read my Bible. I need to do this. I need to witness. I need to be a good husband. I need to be a great businessman. I need to be, you know, I need to do all these things. But the main thing has to remain. How can I love God the more? How can I develop that relationship with Jesus Christ? Ministry in our life does not begin with what we can do for God, but it begins with our love for Him. Ministry does not begin with a love for people. It begins with a love for God, and that love from God, it overflows to everything else that we have in life. Amen? And that is the basic Christian. Jesus Christ came on this earth, and He wanted to stress a point that Christianity is not a religion. It's not do's and don'ts. It's not uh, how can I, you know, stop doing this? How can I stop doing this? It's a relationship with God that you maintain. Jesus came to prove that religion is just do's and don'ts. You do this or you don't do this. And which are those things that are important? Don't get me wrong. It is important for you to, to stop doing bad things. It is important for you to witness. It is important for you to be, you know, the greatest in your community. It's important for you to have influence, but they are not the main important thing. They are not the issue. The issue is quite simple, and it is found in Jesus's question towards Peter. Do you love me? And in other words, saying, Peter, do you have a relationship with me? Many people, when we come to church, we concentrate on do's and don'ts. And we forget the fundamental of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing and nothing will give us strength and will give us courage to continue and to walk in this life like a deep and sincere devotion to Christ. Nothing will keep us on course. Nothing will give us strength to finish our race like in sincere devotion to Christ, like a love for God. And we've seen it many times. You know, we have, with our church, we have a great vision. Our vision to see thousands of people being saved. Our vision is to see incurable diseases being healed in this place. Our, our vision is to see people who come in financial curses, in relationship curses, and those that have problems, their lives being restored, marriages restored, families come together. But we have to understand we cannot accomplish, we cannot accomplish those things without relationship with the Holy Spirit. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit has to be the main priority. As we get up in the morning, our main thing is not, oh, well, I need to make sure I read my Bible. I need to make sure that I don't say these things. Make sure I please my parents. Those things are important, but the main thing is our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Nothing will help us to overcome our troubles our, when there's no money in our pockets, when we, when we are sick, when we are in despair. Nothing will carry us through like a deep and sincere devotion to Christ. Amen. And we see in the life of Job, when we see that Job, he had everything that you can possibly ask for. And then when he lost at that point, he lost all. He left his children die. He lost his wealth. He lost everything that he had. Even, even his wife turned against him. There's one thing that always remained with Job, his love for Jesus. His love for Christ. And that you see during that lowest point of his life, his love for God was able to get him through his difficulties. I want to tell you many times we try to battle with certain addictions. We try to battle with certain problems. There's certain challenges that we're facing. But I want to tell you this morning, you cannot overcome them unless you have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. We were never meant to solve our problems. The Holy Spirit that comes with us, it begins to partner with us and gives, gives us strength to overcome the things that we're facing. We were never meant to do life by ourselves. Holy Spirit is our helper. Holy Spirit is our companion. He is our friend and He wants to help. But the moment we do it by ourselves, we will fail. And at the end of, it, that, at the, end of the day, we'll be more disappointed than we started. So I want to stress that the importance that the main thing about Christianity is not the work we do, but the relationship we maintain and the atmosphere produced by that relationship. If you do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the things that you're doing, you know, 
Go and talk to people. Try to be a good husband. Try to keep your marriage together. Try to keep a, a strong family. If you don't have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will end up disappointed. You will end up being worn out. You will end up being hurt. And at the end of the day, you will quit. Relationship with the Holy Spirit is something that fuels the purpose that God giving you. Relationship with the Holy Spirit is that engine that helps you drive that car. It's like you're trying to push a car up a hill by yourself. And you cannot do that. At the end of the day, you will get tired and that car will roll over you and you'll die. You know? So Holy Spirit is, is the one, it's the engine that helps you to accomplish your purposes in life. If you are called to be a great businessman, you cannot do it by yourself. Anything that you will accomplish without the Holy Spirit will be without peace and will be without comfort. And anything that you accomplish without peace and comfort at the end of the day will destroy your life. We've seen many people that accomplish so many great things without God. But at the end of the day, they either take their life, they, they go into depression, they want to commit suicide because life was not meant to be done without the Holy Spirit. He is your companion. He is your friend. He is your helper that wants you to be partner up with him, to spend time with him every day, to say, Holy Spirit, I want to get to know you. I want to think what you think towards me. I want to accomplish what you designed me to accomplish. And he will make those things come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've seen, um, I remember when we were beginning our church and... Uh, we had many things that, that we wanted to accomplish. We had a great vision. We had like, in the beginning when we started, we just had a few families and we said, we want to save the city. We want to see people being healed. We want to reach out to American speaking people, to Hispanics, to blacks, just everyone. And people are like, it cannot happen. You know, it cannot happen. It will not happen. But our pastor, one thing he had, he said, we can do it with God. We can do it with the Holy Spirit. The task ahead of us was so huge and we knew one thing that we are a few in numbers that we cannot accomplish it by ourselves. And our pastor was just always and always just had that, that love for God every day, spending time with God and just asking Holy Spirit, I know the task that you have on me ahead of me is great, but I know I cannot do it by ourselves. And today we have what we have as a result in partnering with Holy Spirit. You are able to accomplish your dreams, your purposes in life only with Holy Spirit. He will help you to reach the unreachable places. He will help you to raise your wonderful kids. He will help you to keep a strong marriage. He will help you to have a great marriage, to maintain health, to be able to have a great business, to be able to see people saved and delivered. It can only be done with your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And nothing and nothing can keep us on course like a deep and sincere love for the Lord. Amen. So uh, we had many people who started with us in the beginning of our church and who said, you know what, you need great people. You need people who speak well. You need people who are trained leaders. And we had just a bunch of teenagers. We literally, we had a bunch of teenagers who could not, could not speak English. We were horrible speaking English. And we stole bikes. <laughs> Somebody sent me a picture the other day. They said, uh, I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work like that. So I stole a bike and I asked him for forgiveness. <laughs> That's how we were. <laughs> we were very young, very rustic and, you know, inexperienced. But we thank God for a pastor that had a deep and sincere love for God. He had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He always talked to us, just spend time in prayer. You know, love God, follow with God. If you are with God, you will outlast everybody who has talent. You will outlast all those great leaders. You will outlast all of them because talent on the end of the day does not last. Leadership at the end of the day does not last. It's your relationship with the Holy Spirit that remains to the end of the day, amen? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. And, and today, you see wonderful leaders being raised. You see people that are on fire for Jesus Christ. Today, you see, you know, our youth pastor that travels kind of all over the world to preach. You know, but it was just, it started off with that relationship with the Holy Spirit. We had nothing but that relationship with the Holy Spirit and we overcame. If you want to reach your dreams, if you were just wondering, you know, I have great dreams. I have this great vision for my life. I challenge you, partner up with Holy Spirit. 
you will reach that place and you look back and you say, you know what? I wasn't qualified. I wasn't talented. I didn't have the skills that I need to, to be here. But because of Holy Spirit, I am where I am right now. Amen? Amen. And that is that. We want to let you know that beginners are not the owners. Those who have great things in the beginning, they're not the owners, but the finishers. Beginner is never the owner. It is the finisher. People we had, we had in the beginning of our church, we had people who were very talented musically wise. They were just, had like heavenly voices. They, any instrument they pick up, they could sing and they could, they could dance. They can do all these things. We're like, man, I want, if I have this talent, we can build a, a amazing church. If I could have a, if I could preach like he can preach, we can build a, an awesome church. But today those people who were so great in the beginning never lasted. But those who had Holy Spirit, those who partner with Holy Spirit are, are today still running the race. Many marriages start off great. They take counseling, they take all these things, they begin to say, we can do this. But those who put Holy Spirit in the center of their marriage will last till the end. Those who put Holy Spirit in the midst of their families, those families will stay together. Don't get me wrong. You know, all these things are important that we need to do. You know, we need to train ourselves how to be better. We need to be, um, we need to be consistent. We need to take classes how to be better. But they are not the issue. The issue is quite simple and it is found in Jesus' question towards Peter. Do you love me? Do you have that relationship with me? And another thing that we want to, uh, in this story that we read, we see that Jesus before he goes to before he goes to heaven before he's about to say peter you're going to take over the world a new religion is going to a new relationship is going to start Christianity is going to be will come through you i'll build a church on you he does not ask peter if peter can you speak good can you preach you know because last time the servant girl asked you do you follow this man you started cussing so i don't know if you are you good with this can you take on can you take on this task of being a good preacher Jesus never asked that. We see that Jesus does not concentrate to Peter. Are you an eloquent, can you, can you be, you know, a good speaker? Can you lead 3,000 people? Can you lead a, a generation that will be able to conquer the whole world? Can you, can you preach sermons that will get people saved and people healed? Jesus does not concentrate on that. He doesn't ask Peter, Peter, do you know the Bible? Do you know, this? Do you know your, your word? Do you, do you know how to quote from Genesis to Revelation? Those things are important, but Jesus does not concentrate on that. We have to understand what we can do for God is important and we should get better at it. That's, it's not, that's not, you know, that's not the, you can't argue that. You have to do your best in all areas, but they are not the most important. The most important thing about your Christian life is your love for God. How can you spend time with Him? How can you develop that relationship with Him? How can you think what God thinks? How can you walk with Him? He wants to have that relationship with you. He wants to get to know you more. He wants to help you. He wants to develop that relationship with you. We look at great examples and, and from today's, uh, today's world. Like, uh, for example, when I had a chance to spend a few years in Nigeria with the pastor prophet TB Joshua it was it was uh, sometimes I wouldn't believe how much time he spends with God sometimes it would be three in the morning he would just leave for hours and hours and we, would, we wouldn't see him sometimes he would leave for days and he would just spend time with the Holy Spirit we'd be talking with the Holy Spirit and today 25 years on every service you see people being healed you see people being delivered you see people being saved and it's a result of that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Today, people who do great things have one thing in common. They have a great relationship with the Holy Spirit. You, you have dreams. You want to do amazing things for God. You want to have an amazing goals that you're like, man, I, I know I can accomplish. I know I'll be great at it. The secret to that success is partner up with the Holy Spirit. Develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit and you will be there and you will get to that place. Amen. We see in, in John 21, uh, in John 21 verse from the beginning to end, Jesus never asked Peter, 
do you have any talents? Can you lead my people? Can you do this? And even in the Bible we see when Israel was looking for a king. And everybody's like, well, we need to find a king. We need to somebody who's skilled, somebody who has leadership skills, somebody who's tall, handsome. And they begin to pick Saul. But God's like, no, I, I want David. I want a man who loves me. I want a man after my own heart because I know that will last till the end. And we see in the Bible that when they pick Saul, Saul was, he was, you know, handsome. He was tall. He had skill. But at the end of the day, he took his life. He could never make it to the end beginners are not the owners those who start the race they're not eventually those who start off great they're not eventually the ones to finish great it's those who have that relationship with the holy spirit will be able to finish the race and finish it good amen if our reward for our relationship with the holy spirit is power we have to understand what i mean by power is it get, Holy Spirit will give you strength to overcome the things that you're facing. Many of us were facing addictions that we cannot overcome. There's everything that we can do, we did, and we cannot overcome it. But as you develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit, He will give you strength to overcome the challenges that you're facing. If it's in your marriage, if you develop that sincere devotion with Jesus Christ, you will overcome those challenges. If it's in your family that you see your kids are just falling apart and you're taking them from one situation to another, you're getting this counseling, the secret to success is partnership with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that you can accomplish by yourself that will last. Even the thing that you accomplish by yourself will not give you peace and it will not give you comfort because it is God alone who gives peace and comfort. Amen? And in John 14, 26, if you have your Bible, it says that, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This simply means that Holy Spirit wants to have that relationship with you. He wants to teach you those things that you do not know. The challenges that you're facing, he wants to be able to equip you to overcome it. He wants to give you that power to overcome the situation and to accomplish the greatness that you have in your life. Without the Holy Spirit, life is meaningless. Without Holy Spirit, there is no purpose to life because God created us for us to have that partnership with the Holy Spirit. We're coming to church right now. Many of us are like, well, you know, I want to open up a home group. I want to be able to bring people to Christ. I want to, you know, God one day to use me. You have to understand those things are great. But you cannot accomplish them without Holy Spirit. Concentrate on your love for God. Concentrate, God, I want to get to know you. I want every morning that I wake up, I want to be able to spend that time with you because I know you give me instructions, you give me guidance, you'll walk with me, you'll be with me that throughout the day I'll have the power to accomplish my dreams. I'll have the power to overcome weaknesses and all my limitations in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If we want to do great things, we have to have a great relationship with God. And after Jesus has given the commit the after Jesus has spoken to Peter and he said, do you love me? The second thing he said to him is feed my sheep, feed my lamb. And he talks about love for people. So number one we talked about is love God above all. And the second one is love people. You have to understand that the greatest joy in life to be able to see some people being saved. To be able to see people's lives being transformed for the glory of God. We have a miracle catch coming up and there's no greater joy to be able to invite people to church and seeing them give their life to Jesus. There's no greater joy. Uh, yesterday we were talking with Luis and I'm like, you know, it's so awesome to see people's lives being changed because of what you do. It's just, it's just an amazing thing. You know that tomorrow you have purpose. You know that tomorrow somebody somewhere is waiting for you to give them a message of hope. You know that tomorrow somebody, if you don't get up and if you don't got, talk to them about God, they'll live a miserable life. They won't have peace. They won't have joy. So you have that purpose of loving people, of giving life, giving hope to people, saying that Jesus loves them. There's a, there's a great vision. There's a great mission for you. And that's a command that Jesus gives. The two greatest commandments Jesus says that love God and love people. You know, it's sometimes it's not easy to step out and to be able to witness to people. But I'll tell you one thing. When you do that, when you begin to share 
what God has done for you, you will experience a joy that you never experienced. I mean, when one person comes and gives their life to Jesus, the whole heaven rejoices. It tells you that it means something. It tells you that it's, it has a huge value to be able to change somebody's eternity, to be able to change somebody's life forever. It is, it is priceless. So witnessing, step out, be bold. Where, wherever you're at, if it's at your workplace, if it's at a college, if it's whatever that you're doing, be bold, step out and begin to witness. Share the gospel of hope and, we'll see, and you will see that your life will have meaning. You'll have peace and you'll have f- comfort that it's just, it, it's something that's worth living for. Amen. And we have to let you know that any dream that God has given and put in your life, it cannot be accomplished without Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is, is the driving force of everything that we do today. Even in today's service that we are here right now, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do it. People's lives are changed with the Holy Spirit. We cannot accomplish anything without the Holy Spirit. So I challenge you this morning to be able to be in a place where your relationship with God is above all. That what you can do for God is secondary, but your main thing is that your relationship with God. Amen? Are you guys going to spend time with the Holy Spirit? Are you guys challenged to spend time with the Holy Spirit? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus.